In this movie, I'd like to explore the genus section a bit more on the Rossum evolution filter. I'm going to simplify things by taking the square wave out of the mixture right now. And the blue waveform you see is the sawtooth coming from the Moog Mother 32. I'm going to turn up the VCA so we can always hear the sound coming out. And open up the frequency so we can hear our filtered sound. And we can see that output on the spectrograph. I can go ahead and turn up the input coming into the filter if I want to. Again, the blue trace is a sawtooth wave coming out of the Moog, and the green trace is the output of this filter. And you can see how it smooths out that sawtooth depending on the cutoff frequency. There's a very high cutoff. And there's an intermediate cutoff. And you can see the resulting spectrum. I'm going to raise the cutoff to get a few more harmonics through and talk about the genus. The number of poles describes how steep the cutoff is on this low pass filter. In other words, how much the high harmonics are being filtered out. Three poles equals an 18 dB per octave filter. The genus control switches between these settings to four pole, 24 dB per octave, five pole, 30 dB per octave, and six poles, 36 dB per octave. It's not a completely smooth transition in between them. It's not a hard switch in between those, and neither is it a continuously variable change between them. What's going on inside the filter is that it's rerouting the current through poles, so it's actually mixing together the different responses rather than changing the slope of the filter. Let's go ahead and increase the genus to four. And you can see there's a point where we're in between the three and four pole LEDs, and then we switch to four pole, and you can see the change in the waveform and in the harmonic spectra. So there's our in-between point. And now we're solidly in a four pole filter. It reduces the high harmonics a bit more. Cross fade up to five poles, bringing in that fifth pole. More high harmonics are reduced, and then going up to six poles. I kind of went fast through that transition, but you can see there is actually a transition zone as opposed to being continuously variable in between them. That's with a little bit of resonance turned up. I'll turn down the resonance and fade back down through these poles. And you see how the harmonic spectra changes with these different pole settings between more high harmonics or fewer high harmonics. Now we can also apply modulation to the genus control to change that cutoff during the course of a note or while we're sustaining a note. I'm going to grab the triangle LFO from the Moog's output here, plug that into the genus CV, which is right now it's centered, very little effect, and put the sound initially in between four and five poles. Since that is a bipolar LFO control, and it'll go lower and higher, meaning fewer poles and more poles. I'll sustain a note, turn down the frequency so we can hear some changes, and then start increasing the modulation amount. There's just between four and five poles. Get more into the transition zones here. Just a touch of that three pole sound, you can really hear how much brighter it is. And then deeper into our modulation. Now, just like the cutoff frequency, this genus control voltage can also go up into audio rates. I'll increase the LFO rate on the Moog, which can go into the low end of the audio frequencies. See the little light show there with the LEDs? And you see the very complex harmonic spectra we get as a result. That brings up the idea of maybe we could use an oscillator to FM the genus. So I'm going to zero out that depth right now. Change the patch to take the triangle wave from our second oscillator, the disting over here. Sustain a note again, and start increasing the depth. That little buzz you hear is the beating between oscillators. I can go ahead and change the tuning, such as octaves. Let's 
kind of a cool traveling sound. Again, we're changing the number of poles at audio rate. Play around the detuning. And you can also play other games such as enveloping that amount. So let's pull it out of the FM, take it into our second envelope generator here, crank up the amount, slow down the attack and decay, and also start the genus at three poles. Since this is a positive going voltage, it'll increase the number of poles and decrease it as it goes through the envelope. And make it faster. And maybe I'll even invert that effect. So I start with a deep filter, go bright when the envelope rises, fewer poles equals brighter sound, and then decay back down to more poles. So I'll start with a high pole setting, use an inverse voltage from the envelope. Now I have a little bit more high frequency bite on the attack of the note. That's in addition to what we're doing with the frequency. Those transitions between the poles result in a rougher transition than you would get from just sweeping the frequency. But again, if you're using something like an LFO, that can create some interesting effects. Let's go ahead and use the triangle there. Let's go ahead and latch a little arpeggio again. slower change in tonal quality is coming from changing the number of poles, not changing the cutoff. So Genus changes the character of the filter and also gives you another way of modulating a sound while you're playing it just to create some more variation. I could use this LFO or I can move over something such as my mod wheel output from my MIDI to control voltage converter and change the genus that way. So the genus control not only gives you a way of changing the character of this filter, it gives you another parameter to modulate to evolve the sound, <laughs> no pun intended, during the course of sequence or while sustaining a note. 